What's going on, my bulls? Another good day in the crypto world. We've come back up. We seem to be going up. I think we're actually going to bust past 3300 and get to 3400 by the time the weekend's over, maybe by the time the day's over. Of course, today is Saturday, August 14th. Be sure to smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button because we're bringing current crypto news to you every day and helping you make money. Again, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So do your own research and make your own decisions. But check this out. You know, if you had just, you know, how many people sold Bitcoin when it dropped down to 30? A lot of people got scared thinking this wasn't going to go on. But on this channel, we were telling you, listen, there's some manipulation going on. There is going to be a bull run 2.0 coming up because this full, full, full bull cycle is not over. We were telling you that. And those of you that listened, it is paying off right now because... Last night, Bitcoin got over 48,000. Ethereum got over 3,300. You know, Ethereum got all the way down to 17, 1,800 uh, back in uh, uh, July. And then it all took off. And so those of you that listen, good job. HODL is the way to go. With that being said, I'm, I, I take profits. I take profits, but I don't sell when I'm scared. I sell when I know it's way above what it's going to go down to. And I take profits just so I can buy more when the price does eventually go down. Because the price will go down. Let's take a look. Speaking of all that, let's take a look at the charts. This is the Ethereum chart here. I'm in trading view. Right now it's at around 3260. So here we were down at the bottom at about 2900. I knew Ethereum wasn't going to go under 2900. So I was able to make some money off of here. I wish I would have put more in. I ended up making my biggest bets when we got into about uh, 3130. Because uh, I was like, all right. You know, you look at this line here, you're like, all right, this thing's pretty held here. I think we're going to pump. But, you know, I actually got in after it had dipped down here. Because, you know, these were our dips. Excuse me. Wow, I'm reading this completely wrong. When we got down to in the 2900s, because that was our dip last time, uh, back here on the uh, 12th. I look at these charts so much, I'm going crazy. But then we got up here, and I was like, you know what? Looking at these lines here, I don't think, I think that it double dipped down into the 29s the high 29s, and I was like, I think that's as low as it goes, because you see back here, we were up here around 32, couldn't quite bust into it. Well, excuse me, we got into 32, my bad. And then we dipped down to 2,900. I'm like, all right. And then we got up to almost 33. And I was like, I don't think we go down to 29. I think at worst, we go to 2,950. And when it came down here and hit 2,980, and then came back up, I'm like, all right, that's a strong rejection. That's a strong sign of support. But you know what? Just like over here, when it double dipped, I was like, I think we're going to come down one more time to the high 29s before we go back up. And that is what happened. So I was able to make some money off there, taking the long. And then we got up to around here. I'm like, you know, I think we're solid. I set, I bought in here at 3128, I believe, on a long. And that rode up nicely. I took some profits along the way. You know, I had a nice stop loss here, just in case I was wrong. But I wasn't. It went up, and now we're sitting here around 32.60. And I think we're going to get up to at least almost 34. But I think by the end of the weekend, we may get above 34. Let's go to Bitcoin real quick. This is really important stuff because with Bitcoin and Ethereum and crypto, you don't just have to buy low and sell high. For instance, here, you know, on Bitcoin... Um, when I got up here to around 46.5, because this is a, from looking at the charts, this is a resistance point. When I got up here and it tested it once, tested it twice, tested it three times, I said, you know what? I think a dip's going to happen. So I bought some Bitcoin on a short, which means if the price goes down, I make money. And I ended up selling most of it here around uh, a little under 45. So that was a really nice profit coming down. And I got more Bitcoin. And so now I have more Bitcoin now that... Uh, more Bitcoin down here than I did when I was up here. And now the price rallied back up. I have more, without doing anything else, I have more money now, more value than I did here just because I shorted it and made money going down. I hope that makes sense. If you're, if you're newer to leverage, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, but do your research. Make sure you know what you're doing because you can get wrecked. So if you just dive right in and think you know what you're doing, no, be careful. Go in slowly and work your way up to it with experience. It's a skill like anything else. Let's dive into some newsy. This is really important. This is in the title I put about Bitcoin all-time high, hits new all-time high. This is what I'm talking about, the realized cap. So when we go in here, 
Bitcoin's total realized market cap, we'll get into what that is in a second. Today, it surpassed the number numbers registered in April 2021, which is when Bitcoin is, you know, at 60,000 at its, at its all time high of the value of one Bitcoin uh, when its price had topped out. But here we are. This statistic was shared a few hours ago by the blockchain data provider Glassnode, which is a really commonly used chart. Very good one, too. Via a tweet, as Bitcoin registered a realized cap of $378 billion. Now, what that means, realized cap is a way to have a slightly more real or honest measure of the total value moved with Bitcoin. Moved with Bitcoin is what we're talking about. Whereas market cap, market cap, market cap is the value of one Bitcoin times the number of Bitcoins in circulation. Okay. Now, realize cap, it seeks to add up the value that each Bitcoin token had, had when it was last moved. So we're talking about the real value of Bitcoin as tokens are moved instead of tokens just sitting still. So the realized value of tokens sitting still is 60K, you know. Because that was a high in April. It's not right now. Right now, it's like 48K. But of tokens that are actually being moved, when you put all that together, the real value puts us over 100,000. So really, it provides a better approximation of the value moving on the network, which is what matters. Because, for example, Satoshi's coins, which will never move because I'm pretty sure he's dead. I'm pretty sure Satoshi was actually a man named Hal Finney. Anyways, whether it was or not, whether Satoshi is alive or dead, his coins have never moved. And we don't think they're ever going to be moved. So we, we consider them actually lost. And those, in addition to many other people's stories of coins being lost. So the real number of Bitcoins that will ever be available for actual circulation is going to be well under 21 million. The most Bitcoin ever made is going to be 21 million. But millions of those will never enter circulation because they were lost. So the fact that so that's why we look at the realized cap, looking at Bitcoin that's actually moving, because it adds in the value for those lost coins. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. The fact that Bitcoin currently has a higher realized capitalization than the recorded during the April all-time high, which was the actual individual coin all-time high of 60-some thousand, is a sign of optimism as it indicates an increase in the network activity, possibly pointing to a greater adoption or even greater confidence in Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. So going back up here. The realized cap number brings Bitcoin to being really having a value of about 100,000. And that's what we think it will actually get to before this bull run is over. Um, And just a little more here. You know, they're saying Bitcoin gets better and better. I agree. They're going to launch the taproot update, and that's going to increase security and efficiency as well as lower fees. What that really does is it allows more transactions to happen in a single block taking up less space on network and lowering fees. So that was what I really wanted to point at, that all-time high. That's a really big thing to look at because it indicates the supply and demand in in kind of a more real way. Because yes, technically there are, when Bitcoin's done being mined, there will be 21, currently there's 18 some million Bitcoin in existence that have been mined. But in reality, maybe only about 15 million of those are actually even possible to be in circulation. Way less than that are actually in technical circulation because they just sit in wallets. But we're pretty confident that probably about 3 million Bitcoin have been lost and will never ever be found or circulated. So that really brings in the realization cap, the realized cap here, okay? Big thing to pay attention to. Moving on to the next piece of news. So, of course, as you may know, the crypto, the not the crypto, but the infrastructure bill moved from the Senate to the House with the undesirable crypto language in it. Just barely. It almost got moved out. It was going to get moved out in the Senate, but that one guy, Richard Shelby from Alabama, was a little, little craphead. And he, he actually agreed with doing the change, amending the language. He actually agreed with doing that, but he used it as leverage to say, hey, you guys give me more spending for military then, or else I'm going to be the one person that vetoes this whole thing because it needed to be a unanimous decision to amend it. He, of course, they didn't give him what he wanted because it was, it was uh, what do we call, what do we call it? Not blackmail, but um, 
exploitation. So kind of a dick. Uh, Crypto-friendly House Democrats are already plotting a long-shot bid to scale back digital currency tax rules tucked into this infrastructure plan, threatening to prolong lobbying battle and snarl the, uh, the legislation in the Senate. That, that snarled the legislation in the Senate. So leading the charge in the House are California Democrats in the orbit of Silicon Valley, Valley, Valley such as these folks right here. Because one of the, it's, it's not surprising at all they're coming out of Silicon Valley because it's tech. Bitcoin, blockchain, crypto is tech, and it is the future. I'm not just saying that because I'm some, oh, I hope so. Like, it is. It's like back when the internet was coming. Oh, it's the future. Or when Facebook and social media are coming up. Oh, it's the future. It's just so effing obvious. And actually, crypto is being adopted faster than the internet was. Significantly faster than social media was. The only thing that's actually faster was the adoption of VCR. (laughs) <laughs> it, it, as a nice little funny note. But members are starting to pay attention, Soto said in an interview. There is growing bar- bipartisan support to make sure this language is right. Because again, to recap that, I'm kind of tired of covering the story, but it's a, a big one and we just need to keep paying attention to it. Is that the language of broker is completely undefined. So basically, even even a developer can be considered a, mo- uh, a broker and therefore being scrutiny to all kinds of regulation and silliness. So that's what that is about. That's the update there. One more thing to move into. Bitcoin surge fuels 100,000 price prediction as massive Ethereum, Cardano, Binance Coin, Ripple, and Dogecoin rally pushes crypto entire market cap back over $2 trillion. So Bitcoin's price is up 40% on this time last month. So as a, at the time of writing this, which is today, August 14th, so it's up 40% from where it was July 14th. And it's edging closer to the psychological 50,000. And I think Bitcoin is going to get above 50,000. It's potential by the end of the weekend. Uh, it also helped the soaring price of Ethereum, Cardano, Binance Coin, and Ripple. And Dogecoin, I guess. But pushing the combined crypto market firmly over $2 trillion for the first time since May, since the, since the uh, correction. Some Bitcoin and crypto investors are feeling confident the Bitcoin price could exceed its all-time high over 60000 So that's one statement. But if Bitcoin just follows Ethereum, it goes over 100. Now, this is said by uh, uh, Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Commodity Strategist Mike McGlee, in an interview anyways. So Ethereum being the second largest cryptocurrency has outpaced Bitcoin this year with its rise fueled by major upgrades, the booming DeFi, decentralized finance market, and the NFT craze. With both DeFi, with both DeFi, which seeks to recreate traditional financing without the need for banks, and NFTs, unique digital crypto tokens tied to online media, that's the way they're defining anyways, but NFTs are much more than that, so is DeFi, almost entirely based on Ethereum. So that's making Ethereum price is up almost 700% from August 14th, 2020, while Bitcoin is up around 300% right now from its price in August 2020. That's a big difference because if you're going to put, you know, a thousand bucks in something, it would, you would have made your thousand would be 7,000 right now in Ethereum, but 3,000 in Bitcoin, both great, both wonderful. But look at that Ethereum up almost more than double of Bitcoin while Bitcoin's up 300%, which is insane. 300% in a year is insane. So if 700 is like out of this world and, you know, if you got in the right altcoin, you might be up 10,000%. But those are way riskier than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin and Ethereum, very safe. Not financial advice. Not a licensed financial advisor. Do your own research. Make your own decision. Sharing my opinion. Uh, Ethereum has climbed 70% this last month alone. You know, like we said, Bitcoin's up 40%. Ethereum's up 70%. BNB's up 30 Cardano and, Doge, and uh, XRP are just on a tear. I'm not a big Dogecoin fan. It has no use currently. It's originally a meme coin propped up by... Elon Musk. That's how I feel about it. I'll never buy Dogecoin. Will people make money on it? Oh, I'm sure. But it's just it's so much more volatile up and down and the fundamentals just aren't there. I just stay away from it. There's just so many things to get into. You can make a lot of money on Doge. On Doge, excuse me. But I don't want to get in on it. I just don't. I don't. I don't. It's not a, it doesn't have any use. 
That's what I got. I'd rather buy Ripple. I think Ripple's going to rally like crazy. Ripple's a dollar sum right now. I think it's going to get to 10 to 15 bucks. I think Cardano's going to get to 8 to 10 bucks, and it's you know a little over 2 bucks right now. I bought a bunch of Cardano at about a buck 70 a few days ago, and it's already up at like 220. Good return there. But I think it can get to these altcoins. These altcoins can go up more on a percentage basis than Ethereum and, and Bitcoin can. But they also have less of a, floor, a stable floor to stand on. So, um, and then lastly here, uh, Tom Lee, the head of research at Fundstrat Global Advisors, thinks Bitcoin is due a, high, a surge higher potential to the technical trading data. With Bitcoin crossing above its average price over the last 200-day, its 200-day moving average is what that is, we think Bitcoin 